Oh God, it's so hot, kind of. For my next announcement, because I am unemployed now, um, please go ahead and purchase Antisocial Coder Club. I have some merchandise. Go ahead and check it out. You might find something you like. I hope you do. It's the best way to support this channel from this point on. I have to push this now. I have to pay rent. I'm sorry. I'm going to start this by saying do not do this. If you can avoid this path, don't go down it. You know, like just study data structures and algorithms every single day or as much as you can on a regular basis. Not because you have an interview, just to, you know, keep yourself fresh. And honestly, if you like puzzles and challenges and just thinking games, do it every day. I think it's like a fun little exercise. I honestly don't mind studying. But point is, if you were in my situation where you applied to a company you did not think you would get into and they actually emailed you back requesting an interview and it turns out that that interview was going to be in five days and not your predetermined thought process of two weeks of preparation, because hey, if you're in that situation, this is the path for you because you have no other option. For some clarity, I wanna tell you guys what I applied for. I applied for Microsoft Leap program, which is an apprenticeship program to help people with different backgrounds get into software engineering. You know, it's Microsoft. I'm gonna do whatever I gotta do to learn as much as possible. There's a lot of smart people there. That is the program I applied to. I did not apply to the normal software engineer route, but it, there was still technical interviews, so I feel like this type of prep, again, avoid it if you can, but this type of prep is very useful to anyone, especially you guys who are self-taught developers. You already know how hard it is to finally just get an interview. So imagine getting an interview at somewhere big and bombing it because you weren't prepared, right? This is what I did. So to prepare for this interview, the number one thing I did was just get a general feel of what they're gonna be asking me. Yes, you have to know a bunch of data structures, right? But some companies typically focus on specific data structures. And the way you could do this is you could go on leak code where in the discussions people talk about their interviews and directly link questions. Another way you could do this is by going on Glassdoor where people talk about their interviews and literally link questions or tell you the exact question they were asked. And in my case, there was a lot of linked list questions, so I decided to focus on that. Link lead, link, Jesus Christ. Link, linked lists, link lists, list, list can't do it. Those types of lists were something that I was always scared to dive deep into for some reason. I was just intimidated by it. And obviously when you start, you're comfortable with arrays and array problems, right? So I just knew my first step was to just research, do the research for whatever company it is, and figure out the types of questions they generally lean towards. And that's going to be your main priority. And then after that, everything else falls secondary, third, thirdary. That's not a word. In my case, I had four or five days. I didn't have time to just sit there and figure out the questions myself. Um, I made a list, a long list of questions that I needed to do. I think the list was up to like 50. One thing I will say is you need to watch videos that teach you the fundamentals of these data structures, right? So for example, linked lists, I learned about um, slow and fast pointers. I didn't know anything about that. And apparently that's a very common way to solve linked list problems. So I wouldn't have known that if I was just, you know, trying to figure that out by myself. That's a lot of time wasting. You don't have the time, I'm sorry. You gotta practice by just watching other people figure it out, right? So after you've collected your problems that you're gonna be doing, um, now it's time to, you know, figure out how much time you could give to these problems. I made a limit of 25 minutes max, but on average, I wanted to do 20 minutes max on figuring out these problems, right? I know I'm a visual learner, so personally, I had to watch a lot of videos and to get through a lot of these videos, you just gotta play these videos like two times fast and get the general gist. I know it sounds bad, but it's okay because it actually works for some reason. I got the general gist of how they approach the problem. I wasn't really worried about how they were coding up the problem. It's just how they understood the problem, how they, you know, the techniques they thought of for solving the problem. And that was that. And then for the next 10, 15 minutes, I would dedicate that to strictly copy and pasting that problem, typing it out so my brain can understand each line and commenting each line out to understand what every single line of code is doing. After I did that for every single problem, I did I think like 50 problems. After I did that for every single problem that I felt was important to understand or you know taught me something about some other problem, I was like, okay, time to go through all these problems again. But this time, instead of watching videos, I just delete every line of code I've written and try to just understand my comments 
and code it out myself, right? Understand the comments, code it out themselves. And if the comments don't make any sense to me, then I'll watch the video again to, again, really understand what I'm doing. That really helped. You know, I did the first pass and then this is my second pass. I would equate this to looking at all the answers, writing them down, and then on your second pass, just literally trying to answer the problems without looking at the answers you wrote down. And if you can't do it, understand why, start all over. Don't allow yourself to pass on to the next question until you could do this from scratch off the top of your head, trust me. And if you can't, it just shows that you really don't understand. And if you really don't understand, then in the future, in the interview, when this question is asked, you're not gonna be able to at least talk it out so that you can explain it to yourself. You don't have to necessarily memorize every line of code, but I would say you have to, at minimum, memorize techniques to solving this type of problem. I did this method for 50 plus problems. Keep in mind, four days. Um, and if one explanation isn't working out for you, if you're not a visual learner and you just like reading code and understand code, then go ahead, do it that way. But if you're gonna copy and paste someone else's solution, please understand how they came to that solution. You know, you don't always have to understand everything right away. And I feel like, yeah, people tell you to grind on leak code, grind on algo expert. I'm gonna make that a thing that people say, because I know. Anyways, grind on whatever thing you gotta do, but at the same time, it's a very important skill to understand the code that you're reading, because that's what you're gonna be doing in a real world environment either way. Real world environment, they're not gonna be asking you to, you know, do data structure problems <laughs> while you're working. You know, that was just for your interview. In a real world environment, you're gonna be reading other people's code, understanding it, and adding on to it. So that type of mentality, that type of problem solving process can be applied to interviews. Um, I feel like not a lot of people encourage that, but I feel like it saves a lot of time and it personally helped me in understanding. Now, I guess the real question is, did I get the job? I was gonna say, watch my next video. After doing this for a couple days, I was very sleep deprived and don't get me wrong, again, do not do this unless you absolutely have to and you have no knowledge um, I was very much sleep deprived. A big thing that I'm gonna say that I completely forgot when I finish this video is make sure to use different resources, use Leap Code. I use Algo Expert and Leap Code back to back, and I use a random Udemy course that a student of mine gave me a year ago because he got a job in Amazon, but he said, no, y'all aren't paying me enough, so he rejected that job, which must be nice to reject Amazon. But the point, the point is, I use three different resources to learn. So use a bunch of resources. I have crack in the coding interview, I just, eh, I haven't touched it. <laughs> So after you're done with everything, you're probably sleep deprived by now. You've been studying for four days, me. You feel prepared, but did I get the job is a question. And I would pass this on to the next video saying, oh, hey, <laughs> hey, watch the next video to find out. Not only, I don't, I don't even know who made it to the end of this video, but I did not get the job. But it wasn't because I wasn't prepared, because I was very prepared, trust me but I did not get the job and I'll talk about it in my next video. <sighs> Please make sure to like, subscribe and comment. I'd really appreciate it. Um, I need it now, <laughs> but yeah, I'd really be appreciated. Thank you guys so much.